Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a great pleasure to be able to speak at Bill C-23 today, and I want to pause and say that when we have these rushed processes with uh, closure on debate and abbreviated time to look at a critical bill, it's rare for me to have a speaking opportunity, very rare. And so I do want to thank uh, the Liberal Party for giving me a speaking slot today. I don't know if I agree with them in every aspect of their objections to this bill, but I agree in many of them. Look, Mr. Speaker, when I look at what we, what we need in Canada to fix democracy, I re remember a, a, a little ad, a very clever ad, put together by Fair Vote Canada. It starred one of my favorite icons of Canadian comedy, Don Ferguson of Royal Canadian Air Force. And he wore a white lab coat, and he started talking about the really serious tragedy in Canada of electoral dysfunction, the failure to perform well when it came to elections. Now, I'm not going to go down the double entendres that went through that fair vote ad, but as you can imagine, there were many of them. But it did bring to mind the need for a prescription to fix an unhealthy system. And the ad pointed to the issue, which is fundamental to fair elections in Canada, getting rid of first past the post, having election results which are then mirrored in the composition of our House of Commons. We need reform. We need a Fair Elections Act. We need to deal with the unhealthy level of hyperpartisanship, the nonstop attack ads, the fact that we haven't gotten to the bottom of the robocall scandal of the last election. But this bill isn't it. A real prescription for a healthy democracy is in our grasp, and instead we get this bill, which will actually weaken our electoral system, weaken democracy, and further reduce voter turnout. We had an opportunity to sideline the cynical politics of nonstop attack ads, which function as a deliberate mechanism, which is the language used by political spin doctors of voter suppression. That's the goal of nonstop negative advertising, is to reduce voter turnout in the interest of another party. A lot of things now pass for political prowess for which anyone who loves democracy should hang their head in shame and be condemned for ever standing for election again. This is not about every party getting out and urging everyone to vote, as we've heard from people say across the aisle all day. Over and over again, we have examples of efforts to do exactly the opposite. And I'm afraid this bill is in that spirit of reducing voter turnout. We could have, with this bill, pursued the reforms put forward by the Honourable Member for Wellington Halton Hills found in Private Member's Bill 559. That would have led to fairer elections. We could have leveled the playing field for financing so that members of Parliament who come to this place as independents have a fair chance to raise the funds they need to run for re-election. But we didn't. Now, the ways in which this bill reduces the, success, the, the potential for a healthy democracy and will worsen voter turnout need to be reviewed. Many of my colleagues in this place have given very eloquent and articulate and full reviews. Particularly, I have to give credit and, and, and homage to my friend, the Honourable Member for Toronto, Danforth, whose work on this bill is brilliant. But let me just point out the things I would agree with. I may be a minority on this matter, but I don't really think it's a problem to create a Commission for, Environment, for Elections Canada operating out of the Office for Private Prosecution, Public Prosecutions. I see that as an independent place. The problem is they haven't given that office any tools. They haven't given that office their subpoena powers. And worse, for some reason, they have created a black box surrounding the work. They've amended the Access to Information Act in this bill to remove from Access to Information anything going on in the work of the uh, Commissioner for, elections, for Canada's elections. They've also removed in the Elections Act the requirement to give any information about investigations. The thing I also would agree with in this bill is the scheme to deal with the robocalls, to have a way of tracking who's buying this kind of automated calling service. That's not bad. I would have voted for that. But this bill also includes a big new loophole for spending of money. It now will not be considered an elections expense to spend money in activities that are considered fundraising for nomination candidates. That is an open door to abuse. Now, what's really the worst part about this bill? And this cuts to the core of democracy. This is a charter issue. I turn, Mr. Speaker, to a most recent statement by the Supreme Court of Canada on the right of Canadians to vote. Made, it was a decision of October 2012. We're all familiar with it. It's in the name of the current member for Etobicoke Centre, so I'm not going to say the name of the case out loud. 
but it was a very strong decision written by Mr. Justices Rothstein and Moldaver. And they had this to say, quote, the right of every citizen to vote guaranteed by Section 3 of the Charter lies at the heart of Canadian democracy. Now, in this instance, they didn't find those rights were trampled, but that was because a lot of the provisions this bill will remove were in place. So I think this quote from the Supreme Court is timely and informs, as my friend, the member for Victoria recently pointed out, that this bill is probably unconstitutional. This is what the Supreme Court had to say at the bottom of page 98 of the decision, that our system strives to treat candidates and voters fairly, both in the conduct of elections and in the resolution of election failures. As we have discussed, the Act seeks to enfranchise all entitled persons. And then uh, an ellipsis, a voter can establish Canadian citizenship verbally by oath. Not anymore, not this bill. And the court goes on to say, the goal of accessibility can only be achieved if we are prepared to accept some degree of uncertainty that all who voted were entitled to do so. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative members of this House and the Minister have utterly failed to provide any evidentiary background for the notion that we have a crisis of voter fraud in this country. There is no evidence for the notion that Canadians are covering themselves up, creating false IDs, and voting more than once. Mr. Speaker, the crisis in Canadian democracy is not that Canadians are voting more than once, it's that they're voting less than once. And this bill will worsen Canadian trust in the system. It will worsen Canadian, it'll increase cynicism. Now, the treatment of the Canadian Chief Electoral Officer, talk about sharper teeth. They're all sharpened in the direction of going after Mark Mayrand. I find this shocking. It's a public servant, he's doing his job, and the job that was being done is now going to be essentially stifled. When I worked on my last book, which was on the crisis in Canadian democracy, ironically, and I wanted to try to get to the bottom of why young people aren't voting, where could I find good research that informs that discussion? I found that good research because it was commissioned by Elections Canada. It started to inform us as political parties, what would we want to do to ensure civic literacy, political understanding from the earliest possible moment, I think it undermines political responsibility and civic understanding to refer to voters as customers. There's something fundamentally wrong with an Elections Act that talks about customer service when we're talking about voting. It's a right. It's not shopping. And every Canadian must be allowed to vote. I can't tell you how heartbreaking it is to hear from people, particularly young people, who've been turned away at the polls because they were found that multiple forms of IDs didn't work. The most, I remember hearing from a young woman in Dawson City when I was doing a town hall there on democracy. She said she tried twice. I said, will you keep trying? She said, I don't know if there's any point. They don't want me to vote. I remember the tears in the eyes of an older man in Pictou County who'd voted in his polling station every day of his 75 years until these new changes were brought in by the current administration and he was denied the right to vote because he couldn't produce a photo ID. He no longer, he didn't have a driver's license. His sister-in-law was working at the polling station, but under the rules, she wasn't allowed to vouch for him because she had not come there for that purpose. Under this new act, we will see more and more Canadians turned away, disenfranchised by the false notion that we have a crisis in voter fraud. That is not our crisis. We need to do everything possible to restore faith in the Canadian public in the health of our democratic system. And this bill takes us in the absolutely wrong direction. Why would a government party do this? Why is there such a rush to disenfranchise Canadians? Is there an election coming right away that we don't know about? Do we have to have all these new rules in place before First Nations and seniors and young people and the poor and the groups that advocate for those parts of our society that are more disenfranchised by having to produce government-issued photo IDs than the rest of us? Is that the point? I am baffled and appalled and deeply shocked and troubled by this bill. The things in it that are good could have been so much better, but the things that are bad are unforgivable in a democracy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister.
Very much, Mr. Speaker. I listened uh, somewhat intently to that member's uh, discourse. Uh, I noticed, though, Mr. Speaker, in the in the returning officers' post mortem of the 41st general election, these are the, the the people who actually run the elections in each of the 308 ridings across this country. The thing that they identified as one of the big problems and obstacles to voter turnout was the fact that people didn't know where to vote, when to vote, and what ID to bring, Mr. Speaker. They also identified the fact on page 17 that some of the polling stations were too busy and that discouraged people from voting, Mr. Speaker. That's what they highlighted as, as uh, should be Elections Canada's primary function in the next election in order to actually increase voter, voter turnout. That's what the people who run the elections in 308 ridings across this, this country said as the biggest obstacle to voter turnout, Mr. Speaker. Additionally, I draw the members of attention to page 25, subsection 143.3, which says that uh, uh, with respect to not vouching, but it says if it does not appear that the elector's residence but is consistent with information related to the elector that appears on the list, the elector's residence is deemed to have been proven. That means if the ID can't be proven, the polling officer still has the right to give that person a ballot, Mr. Speaker. Not disenfranchising anybody, but making sure the person who votes is the actual person who should be voting, here, here. Mr. Speaker. That's a order. Order. Uh, order. The Honourable Member for Sandwich Gulf Islands. Mr. Speaker, this whole notion that we have a problem of proving who a voter is before they vote, again, the Supreme Court dealt with that. If we want to ensure that Section 3 of the Charter is upheld, certain levels of uncertainty must be accepted. They're very minor. We don't have people voting more than once. And how does the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary deal with the fact that people who vote by absentee ballot don't have to produce photo ID. This whole thing is a nonsense designed to reduce voter turnout. Uh, questions and comments? Uh, Lana Khabla, Deputy to Sherbrooke. The Honourable Member for Sherbrooke. For Sherbrooke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to ask my colleague a question. She just made a speech, and I want to ask about uh, the mandate, and I've asked this question of other people as well who have spoken. Right now, Elections Canada has a role in informing people, providing public education, especially when it comes to young people so that they understand the voting system, so that when they are 18, they will understand this privilege that we have in Canada of voting. Can she talk about the measures in this bill that will prevent Elections Canada from making any kind of communications with people and providing that public education to inform young people in particular about their right to vote. What does she think about those measures? For Sandwich Gulf Islands. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank the member for Sherbrooke. I agree completely with him. I spoke only about the role of the chief electoral officer uh, when it comes to research, but it is equally important to have this public education in this activity as well. I hope that in the next federal elect election, all members here will make a genuine effort to inform all young people and get them out to vote.